Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fan, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hey guys, what's good? Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. I'm your host, Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. Let's talk some old school NBA basketball. In today's episode, I want to take a look at NBA legends, giving their opinion about one of the most influential players in NBA history. I'm, of course, talking about the great Pete Maravich, a.k.a. Pistol Pete. But before we dive into today's episode, I want to ask you guys for a small favor. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoy the content. All right, enough said. Now let's dive into today's episode. Now the first player's opinion that we're going to take a look at is from a player who was very influential, especially with his ball handling skills in the 1980s, Isaiah Thomas. Let's have a look. I would like to put Pistol... Pistol Pete at two, because for me, he was the first, no offense, Brent, he was the first white guy with style and flair that I've seen. So Why, why would I take offense to that? <laughs> because you're a white guy. You're the first white guy to have the flash and style and between the legs and behind the back. I mean, because my well, favorite move was the move he did to Jerry West. Pete Maravich, he would take the basketball, right, and he would fake the pass. He would bounce it here, bounce it behind him, fake the pass, and you as a defender would jump, and he'd turn back around, catch the ball, and shoot. <laughs> that, that was a hell of a move. And I was like, okay, I got to try that. No so I tried it in the game, yeah. and Steve Coulter stole it. <laughs> <laughs> but the master of improvisation was the man known as the pistol, Pete Maravich, who was turning the court into his own personal stage. Pistol was like a guy, the game was boring to him, so he had to create things to keep him interested. Pete just has so much razzle-dazzle in his game. He was just hard to guard. The way he handled the basketball so flippantly and so sort of carelessly really offended a lot of basketball purists. What Pistol would do, he would take the ball and set it behind his back, catch the ball, and shoot. That was sweet. Harriman, wow, hook shot. Oh! Uh, he was a true entertainer, and I think he looked at entertainment more than basketball. He used his basketball as a, as a form of self-expression, and one of the real leaders in bringing basketball into this sort of area of artistry. It was like his form of art. Now the next clips that we're going to take a look at are from Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and some other legends. And I was very happy to find those clips because you don't find too many videos from Magic and Larry talking about other players. Now let's have a look. Boy, could he play basketball and could he entertain you. You know, the no-look passes, the dribble the ball and pat it with one hand. That's where I saw that from Pistol Pete. That's where I got it from. It was like the ball was an extension of him. He could shoot it from deep. He could take it in. He could wrap it around. I mean, he was doing stuff that you never saw. And, you know, and you never see a white boy doing that on top of that. This is a white boy I'm talking about. This ain't a brother, but he must have had some brother in him because he was a dazzler. My head is in a bad place. And I always said, man, that ball looks like a part of his hand. And I, was, I said, he must spend a lot of time dribbling and dribbling and dribbling and able to shoot the way he can shoot. I don't think that the people, uh, the fans now, now know how really great Pistol Pete was. He was probably my most difficult opponent as far as one-on-one. I, I saw Earl, uh, the Pearl. I played against Clyde. And I thought those guys gave me problems. Pistol was was unique with with his ball handling and dribbling and stuff like that he could just trick guys and he gave me probably the most difficult time guarding he wasn't as physical as a uh, as a Clyde or Earl but just Pete just has so much razzle dazzle in his game he was just hard to guard Pete was a, a showman played the game with a tremendous flair I mean look at Jason Williams he think of Pistol Pete Pete was a globetrotter. 
you know, he practiced his stuff, you know, day in and day out, and it was honed in. And he had a, 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 like a, a fire about him. Looking at some of these little guys here, they probably never saw Pistol Pete play. I hope they oh, look on God. YouTube. Tell them who Pistol Pete was. Woo! You know, in, in college, Pistol and I fought for the uh, the scoring leader in the country. And all three years, I was second to Pistol. And and I used to make excuses. The only reason Pistol scored more than me is because his dad coached him and so on and so forth. Until I got to play against him. <laughs> and that was a lot of baloney. Uh, he was, he was, he was... Goodness gracious. It's hard to describe somebody that was about 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, uh, handle the ball as well or better than myself. Uh, he just didn't shoot the basketball. He was a pure shooter. Yeah. Uh, he would pass the ball through the eye of a needle. I got a chance to play with him for the first time uh, in the high school All-American game in Memphis. And it's tough. you trying to play your game and you're watching him. Yeah. You know, you're in the backcourt with him. We were starting guards sure. for the All-American team. And, and I, I got to be great friends with him from that point on. I can remember when Pete got traded from Atlanta, where he started his career, over to New Orleans, when the team went down there in his expansion team. And, 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 and they had never won a game. They were 0-14, and, and they were like the worst team in the league. And Otto Moore was the center, and they couldn't do anything. But Pete was just lighting them up. <laughs> and the Portland Trail Blazers, we go in there, we had, we, we had a team. and It was not the championship team, but we had a good enough team. And we were pounding them early, way up at halftime. And Pete, in the second half, just takes over and he goes absolutely wild. He's playing one against five and he's up and down the court shooting jumpers, hooks, full court behind the back passes through guys legs. He's just everything and at the very last play of the game we're up one and Pete dribbles up Four of our guys go chase him because they know he's not going to pass it. <laughs> and he's falling out of bounds and he shoots it as he's tumbling over the row of fans in the corner. Literally. And I am standing underneath the basket waiting for the last rebound of the game. We're going to win the game and they're not going to win a game ever, the New Orleans Jazz. And the ball swishes what perfectly through the net. He's unbelievable. He reminds me a lot, if you can compare him to anybody, to Steve Nash today. Although. Pete was much bigger. Pete was 6'5", yeah. and, uh, and, and much more athletic in terms of the jumping ability until he tore his knee up. I mean, that, that really changed everything for Pete. And, uh, amazing about Pete, 44 points per game, career, for three straight years in an era with no three-point line. Dale Brown, who coached at LSU after Press and Pete were there, Dale Brown went back and charted all the games with the with the running score, you know, Maravich free throw, Maravich 22-foot jumper, Maravich layup, and he calculated that with the current college three-point rule at 19-9, Pete Maravich would have averaged 13 three-point makes per game, which would have given him a career average of 57 points per game under today's rules. That guy is unbelievable. We love him. We missed him terribly. What a great friend. What a great friend. The time has come for honor roll to unveil the greatest player of all time. Pistol Pete Maravich of LSU. Sporting floppy socks and a flashy style, Maravich averaged over 44 points per game. But more impressively, he created a hoops frenzy at a school long known only for football. I think one of the toughest sells in America was to sell basketball in Louisiana. It wasn't until Pete showed up on campus and started playing that word spread like wildfire, that here was a bona fide superstar. As soon as he touched the ball, people went to the edge of their seat. He was scared to take your eye off of him because something might happen. It was as if you had melted down all 12 Harlem Globetrotters and then filled up this skinny 6'6 white frame with everything they had. It looked like Ichabod Crane out there with a mop on his head or something. He didn't wear those gray floppy socks by accident. He knew that people would see him. He knew that he was selling the game. I loved him with LSU. Socks flopping. He had flavor. I'm like, wait a minute. Where did this guy grow up? And he had that that's something, something. You were never quite sure what he was going to do with the ball in the open court because he had a thousand moves 
to either shoot it or pass it. And number 23, Pete Maravich. So how good was Pistol Pete in my opinion? Well, as I said earlier in the video, to me he was one of the most influential players in NBA history. If you think about players like Magic Johnson, Jason Williams aka White Chocolate, Steve Nash and those guys, they had a lot of Pete Maravich in their game. And we gotta give credit where credit is due. And he was not only a great scorer, but he also had great court vision, so all in all he was a very, very good basketball player. The only thing that he was not so good at was defense, but that's a different story. Anyway, that was it for today's episode, you guys. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine.